Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to make you a tempting cash offer on the table today. Two two. So, what do you think of my offer of 25? I don't. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> if I think that's not enough money, I'm going to advise our seller to come here to an auction, hopefully to gamble and get a little bit more money. Today the show comes to you from Penrith in Cumbria. The sale is being held here at Kendall in the Lake District. Lots of people have come along to the show. They're determined to do business. You know why. They want to walk away with the real deal. Birds are first through the door. And I wonder what they brought. Karen, yeah. lovely to meet you too. First up, Karen's got a belting item on her table. This is a bit interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. I might have to have a closer look at this. Right. How fantastic. What's it? American Express Company, Wells, Butterfield and Co. This isn't something you see every day, is it? No. Ooh, mm, I've just spotted a name. Are you yeah, going to tell is. me what yeah. it is? Tiffany. Tiffany. Yeah, you're not daft, yeah, are you? You know no. what's on the back there. So come on then, where's this come from? Well, I actually bought it in a car boot sale about no. ten years ago. It was in the bottom of a box of stuff and I was just rummaging around and I actually didn't realise it was Tiffany. I just liked the design on the front, you know, the stagecoaches yeah. and the things. And, and, you know, I've had it for you know, quite a long time now, so... Have you delved into its history or no, tried not to really, find out no. anything about um, it? What's the material? It feels like gilded bronze, actually, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it is bronze. And what yeah. colour was it when... Was it this colour when it you... It was that colour when I got you it, haven't yeah. It no, I haven't cleaned it, no, it's just been in the drawer, really. Oh, where, Mrs? How am I going to value this? It came from Booty, didn't it? It did, yeah. So it didn't cost much? Well, enough. I paid a little bit for it. Did but you? I'll tell you later what uh, <laughs> I paid for it. All right. You're not going to tell me what you want. I, th mm, I think no. our great leader is about to come in and pass his... Uh... All right. Howdy, yeah. partners. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Don't tell what you want for that fabulous, fabulous... Tiffany Belt, one of the nicest examples I've ever seen out west. <laughs> Where's my horse? <laughs> He's just gone to look for it. Right, right OK. I'm going to get stuck into some money here. He obviously likes it. Yeah, and I know whatever I put down, your quid's up. So I stand a chance. i just got to keep that Mr Dickinson at bay, I think, because I think he's chomping at the bit, the isn't he? Right. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. One twenty. Hundred and forty pounds, and he's back again. How much did she put down? Hundred and forty. Hundred and forty. You may be interested to know that the independent value is say forty to eighty. Mm. Now, in fairness to Karen, she really has put down top money, but it is a top quality item and I still think there's a profit in it because no. the example is mint and that's why that will sell like that partner <laughs> <laughs> you've got to take my money haven't yeah, you you can't resist idea. can you and you're about 130 pounds up aren't you well oh look I got you <laughs> come on how much up are you it would be between five and ten pounds when I bought it yeah, yeah. I wasn't far off was yeah. I Anyway, it's a good deal. Thanks very Long much. Day. Thank you very much. So, with about £130 profit, Ian's yeah. homeward bound with a smile. But what does Karen think? I'm slightly worried. I've paid over the odds, according to the off-screen dealers. But I think I've done all right. I will find out, no doubt, within five minutes of trying to sell it, whether it is right or I'm going to do me money. But I just love it. Thank you, Ian. Meanwhile, the Penrith Gold Rush is about to start on Ian's table. Hiya. I'm you. Sarah. Sarah, lovely to meet you. I've had a look at the jewellery just before you came to the podium, just yeah. to get, my, get some idea about it. The three rings here are 18 carat, yeah. and the two braces are nine. Is that right? Yeah. OK. This little gent solitaire, which is quite sweet, really, is Chester 1909. Right. OK. 
So it's quite a nice little ring. Yeah. At one time, this small jewelry was very collectible by the Australian and Japanese market, which unfortunately for all of us has now just disappeared. Yeah. They all now want big bling and plastic watches, etc. Uh -huh. May I ask why you're selling it? Well, we just kind of inherited, uh, you know, I don't wear gold, so just thought, let's just see what we can get for them, really. You don't wear jewellery? Uh, no, I tend to lose it. Every you time. tend to well, lose it? Well, I got it. married and I lost my wedding ring within five months, so um, it might go towards buying a new, <laughs> <laughs> a new ring. <laughs> so. Well, you should keep one of them <laughs> to replace your wedding band. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Not really my thing, to be honest. So. Does your husband not buy you diamonds? Uh, no, not yet. I haven't got him well trained yet. So. <laughs> well, you've got to get him trained. Send him to <laughs> me. <the> Look, <laughs> I'll teach him. <laughs> so you're selling it basically that you, because you don't wear it. Yeah, there's just no point keeping it. Um, let's just see what we can get. To me, they're just worth the price of gold. Yep. Because the diamonds aren't anything grand or anything of that nature. So that's what I base my price on. OK, let's talk a little money, shall we? So, 50, 100, uh, 150. There's 200 buy it for me. I'd really like it if you could just go on a little bit more. I know what the scrap value is. It's not far from the scrap value. No, I and know. And I've got to make something. Yeah. So what if I gave you another £25? Pounds, made it £225. Pounds. How about £240? 240. £240? 240. £240, we've got a deal. So we've got 200 on the table. So let's say it's 240 That gives me a little bit of profit. Yeah. Now, when you've taken this 240 mm -hmm. You come and see me, <laughs> and I'll make sure you get a very nice wedding band. Right, OK, well, I'll come and visit you then. <laughs> you come and visit me. OK, well, thank, thank you very, very much. Yep, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's two deals and two sales. Now Hello, Martin, my name's Martin. Such right, a good I'm start. Billy. Or will they be left in the dark? Hello, Billy. And what have you brought in here today? Well, these are all wartime things for, for car headlights. Right. That I believe they use during the war to keep the light down. They're blackout lights, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. These would have attached to the front of the headlamp. That's right. And made driving almost impossible because you can hardly see. You imagine the light coming through there. Terrible. It must have been appalling. Mm, terrible. And I heard from my father when he was alive, he used to say lots of people were killed during the... Second World War blackouts because they couldn't see people walking in front of them. No, they wouldn't. And they put uh, notifications out on the radios to say wear something white at night because they were getting knocked over. Right. So that's what these are. And this, do you know what that is? It, I think it's a carbine push, like a bicycle like that. It is, yeah. It's like what they call a carbide light. Right. Where you'd put powder into the reservoir, top yeah. it up with water, and it would burn for a bright light. So you could see where you were going? Yeah. So I should imagine that's probably 20s, that sort of date, 30s. Yeah. Where did you come acquire these things from? Were they used by yourself or your father or something oh, else? Oh, no, they weren't used by me. No? No, no. Um, they've come down the line and they've ended up in my garage for at least 30 years. Right. And, and it's just a shame that they should be lying in the garage so when you somebody, somebody will have a car that would be nice to put with his car, cleaned yeah. up and sprayed up. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, they do like these things to be in a bit of an original condition. Yeah. Without oh, yeah. the rust, which I say, um, we do have a little bit of rust on these. They are. But I, sh they, I should imagine they'd be cleaned up and polished up. Oh, yeah. Uh, and they're interesting objects. Well, I'll put some money on the table and see if we get close to what your expectations are. Yeah. Don't expect any huge sums of money because they're interesting, but they're not high fine art antiques. No. They're but... curios. So I'm going to put 20. 30 pounds down. Now, how does that seem to you, Bill? No, it doesn't. Does it, am I getting close to it or am I a long way off? No, you're a bit off. A bit off? Yeah. A little bit off? Yeah, you're a bit off, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, Bill, I'm going to put another one of those down. And I think that's me for those, I'm afraid. Another, to... another fiver. Another fiver. All right. You another... twisted my arm. 
another fiver, and we've got a deal? We've got a deal. Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Also coming up... £50. Joe's being a bad influence. We could just spend it and have a good time. Well, I could. Can't you walk away with the deal? You're going to crack a face or not? <laughs> nope, well, I've got a smile. Now. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Cumbria. The den is still a hive of activity as people have flocked to our Cumbrian location hoping to get a good deal on their antiques and collectibles. So it's straight over to Joe. Joe, you are her first deal of the Jeanette. Day. Right, Jeanette. And you've brought in this little seed pearl brooch? Yes. Why? Well, it was uh, my mother passed it on to me. And unfortunately, my daughter and grandchildren not into gold at all. Really? So I thought if I sell some of my gold and I can always put it into ices or some saving for them. Yeah. Or you could just spend it and have a good time. Well, I could. <laughs> no. Right. I'm just going to have a quick look at it. Just to sort of... Uh... Well, miraculously, all the pearls are there, aren't they? That's nice. I don't think I can see any missing ones. Looks like it's going to be nine carat. Is it nine carat? It is nine carat. It's really pretty. Really pretty. But it's like you say, it's not. But the earrings. No, it's not. And it's so sad because they're so pretty. I know that. A lot of work. work's gone into yeah. them. And that's yeah. in lovely condition. And the pin's really nice yeah. and, and uh, everything. Right. I'll start with a 50 pound. You're going to crack a face or not? <laughs> yep, well, I've got a smile. A little more. A little more. Please. A little more, please. I'm not going to go much further, I'm afraid. That's it. Could you make it up to 70, please? I'm just going to stop you there because I can tell you that the independent valuers are saying 40 to 60 pounds. This style of uh, Victorian brooch, nine carat, small pearls, is not so fashionable. You would think it's worth more than that, but sadly it's not. I'm going to say to you, 60 with no commission to pay is a good offer. You could go to auction, you might get 80, 90, and you might not. And then there will be 15% to be taken out. So on the day, why Ayman, the girl from Newcastle, has bought herself a brooch. Thank you, Joe. Yes, Alex. You'll have that to right. Let's have a shake on it. Thank thanks you. very much. And thanks for coming in. It's been nice to meet you. And, and you as well. Thank you. Now, with so much gold turning up in the dealer's den, the Duke chats to resident expert Pippa Weddle to hear her take on booming gold prices. Now, what we've got here in the box is a collection of... 9 carat, 18 carat, 22 carat jewellery, coins and so forth. On every Dickinson's real deal, we are seeing more and more gold jewellery. Yeah. I suppose the obvious question here is, is this because of the rise, the surge in gold prices? I think so. I think that's exactly what it is. And everybody's very aware of that and are encouraged to scrap their gold. So we do see a lot of it. I've been very busy this morning. What worries me, Pippa, is there are items in there. For instance, we have a coin here. I know this one has been damaged because it has this mount on it. Yeah. But when coins come through the door, half sovereigns, sovereigns, gold pieces, yeah. are they worth more intrinsically as an object, as a coin, than they are by putting into the melting pot. Very much so. I mean, this one, because it has been damaged, is probably not, but often sovereigns can be worth more in their own right than they would be worth just for their weight. A final question here. OK. If we sort out the beautiful intrinsically worked pieces, mm. the coins, are they going to be more valuable in the future? Are they going to be an investment in the future because there will be less of them around because most people have accepted the almighty pound and put them into the melting pot. I should think in some cases that will definitely be true. Yes, there will be less of them out there and they will become very much more valuable and desirable in their own right because there won't be so many to go around. 
and that's our tip for the future. <laughs> As an investment, keep the better pieces, the coins in good condition to one side, and scrap the lesser and perhaps more modern pieces. That long term could be a good investment. So if you're lucky enough to have a pile of gold to sort through, think carefully before you sell it. Susan, Hi. Hi. I'm yes. Karen. Lovely now to heading over to Karen's show. table, here's a well-loved piece. Right, what have we got here? Would you like to tell me about it? It's a Wedgwood ball that belonged to my grandmother. Right, so it's an inherited piece. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? It's beautiful. You, you love it? I so do. why have we got it here? It's sitting in the cupboard. Yeah. Not used, not looked at. Yeah. So how far back does it go in the family? Can you remember? I can remember it when I was little because I had a small accident with it. Um, but Ooh. other than that... <laughs> so um, quantify small accident. Is that the where it got yep. knocked? Yep. And yep. It was you that mm -hmm. did it, was it? It was. Bag girls. <clears throat> I know. Uh, mind you, I suppose, how long ago was that? Oh, 50 years or so. <laughs> 50 years ago. Yeah, perhaps, it, you know, it wasn't such a valued item then. So let's just turn it over and look on the back. And we can see that we've got the Wedgwood mark yeah. on the back yeah. in gilt printed over. And this is, this is what they call a lustre. Uh -huh. It's absolutely beautiful. And this particular design is self-explanatory. It's got dragons featured all around the inside of the bowl. And this lovely, almost sort of opal colour on the outside there. There's a lady called Daisy McCaig-Jones who was working for Wedgwood about the same time, about the 20s, who created, I expect you've heard of the Fairyland Luster? Yes, I have now, yeah. Yeah, it's just a shame that we haven't got a few mm. nymphs and fairies leaping round because then we'd be talking entirely Yes, so entirely different market, wouldn't we? <laughs> um, right, had it not had <laughs> no. the clonk, um, I think we'd have been talking a couple of hundred at least. So I'm going to put a price down. And I, I'm sorry it's not the full amount, because I, I would have loved it in perfect condition. I'd have been hopping up and down, to be quite honest. Right, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80, 80. Right, there's 80 pounds, and, and that's how I see it. So, ooh, uh, here's the. What a shame. Culprit. Very commercial <laughs> item that is, this Wedgwood Dragon Luster Bowl, but we have this horrendous crack right the way through it. Now, of course, these things can be repaired, yes. but they are costly yes. to do a proper job. Yes. And even when they have been restored, it's down to the dealer really to tell a good customer, look, this has been restored. Mm -hmm. 60 to 80 pounds is where the independent valuers oh, want to be. On. <laughs> it's on the money, right on the money. Lovely lot, but impaired and damaged. I think that's a fair price. Okay. I can still see a really sad little face opposite <laughs> me though. But, um, you know, we're. we're David, what David yes. says and what I've yeah. offered oh, is yes. absolutely spot on, yes. but I don't want you to accept the money and be no. still be disappointed. Um, I think I might give it a go at auction if yeah. I could. Okay. Fingers crossed, Nick. Yes. It could do well. Let's hope so. Thank you. Karen was right on the money, so is Susan taking a big risk to auction? Now the good news so far is the auctioneers have lots of phone calls, probably from dealers, some will be collectors, on what is called a condition report. And a condition report is you telephone uh, or write to the auctioneer and say, I want a condition report on the condition of this particular item. Mm -hmm. And they either give it to you verbally on the phone or they give it to you in writing. So. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they will have told potential buyers there's a crack in it. Mm -hmm. The question is, will the crack put them off? Well, it will put off most collectors, but some may be restorers, and they may want to buy it. So we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed. The reserve is modest, £80. Is it going to sell? I think it's got a reasonable chance. It's coming up now. We come now to lot 135A, which is the Wedgwood Luster Bowl. Shame about the damage. Nice piece. £100, please. 80. Start me 50 then, please. I'll be bidding for it. Is the internet coming in, I wonder? Just a bowl. Damage for £50. Any interest? No bites in the sale room. No one. No one in the room. No one out on internet. No. 
OK. We'll take it on. <laughs> Problem we've got here, there was a crack in it. Nobody wants to speculate on it. Mm -hmm. Are you disappointed? No. Nope. Nope. I'll take it home. Take it home. Uh, it is still a good item. It does want restoring, but the restoration job on something like that can be expensive. That may have held it back. Real deal, Karen Dalmany, our dealer. Karen, you were on the money, girl. Annette, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. Coming up. Oh, look out, look out. Oh, David, you've got to be quicker than that. <laughs> Is Karen trying to sneak a crafty deal? The cash was out like a King Cobra striking. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal in Cumbria. Hello, my name's Martin. Hello. Thank you for coming in today. And over on Martin's table, a local charity had an interesting delivery. What can you tell me about this object you brought in today? It was left outside our hospice at home shop right. yesterday morning. Um, I'd just gone to the bank and so was away about a quarter of an hour before we opened. And when I came back, this was on the doorstep. Right. So someone's left it as a gift for your charity. They have. That's a generous gift. So what do you know about the object? We thought it was possibly a coal scuttle, but one of right. your folk here thought it might be a peat. Right. Basket. Well, it's neither. Right. This is not for coal and it's not for peat, because if you can remember, most coal buckets are open on the top. Exactly. This has a cover. Yes. And the reason it has a cover is to keep the interior safe from the rest of the house. This is Dutch, 19th century, made for moving hot coals around the house. So oh. if you were a parlour maid yes. and you were moving coals up to the bedpans upstairs, yes. you'd take the coals out of the fire in the kitchen which was burning all day yes. and move it upstairs with a lidded vessel like this. Yes. So it's a nice object but it will probably be used for coal or just by a fireside for display yes. purposes yes. at the moment. So you want me to flash the cash? Yes. But I shall put what I think is a generous offer on the table. Now how does... Forty pounds appear to you. I think we'd hoped we'd get more, get up to fifty. Well, I'm prepared to go to forty-five. I think that's about as far as I'd want to go, really, at this stage. Now, Isabel, I've walked in here. First of all, I've heard everything that you had to say, uh, and it's absolutely right what it is. Forty to sixty yes. is the estimation. Uh, you've got forty-five pounds there. If you put another fiver down for 50 pounds, then I in turn will also throw 20 quid in because Gosh. I'm a fan of the hospice and I feel we should support. So That is overly generous of you. That so is very I think generous. then, very happy to do that. If, uh, I think from our dealer's point of view, he's got to sell that and he'll just about get out of it and make a very slim profit if that. So I'm putting my little bit in. So I'm going to say to you, accept that, that's a good deal, and it's going to a wonderful cause. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you well, very much. Have we got a deal? We have. Excellent. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. Well, good to see everyone putting their hands in their pockets for a worthy cause. Welcome to the show. Now we head Pleasure over to Karen's table, where the Duke and auctioneer David Brooks are taking a keen interest in this next item. Right. Quite a handsome object we've got here, haven't we? Family piece? It is. It came from my husband's, my late husband's aunt. Okay. And uh, I have a daughter and son, but it's not their <laughs> style type of thing for what would go in their home. So, yeah. Uh, so perhaps get a bit of money in and treat yourself, is that? No, treat them. <laughs> treat them? Oh, even better. Brilliant. Yeah. Right, let's get down to the object. So it's gone, come back from your family. But date-wise, um, my guess is we're looking about 1860, 1870. If we took the pottery piece away from the Ormulu base, um, it would be marked. Well, it is marked when you lift this off. There's something on there, is there? Inside. OK. Ah, NB. OK, so that probably refers... That. Yeah, that'll probably refer to the metal part. So you've done my job for me, you've lifted it up, haven't you? No, that's brilliant. <laughs> so we've got here an oil lamp, haven't we? Yes. Of course, they didn't have electricity then, and you'd rely on these lamps to light up the room and the candles. Yeah. But what's quite nice about these, and you've beautifully demonstrated it for me, is that in the winter you'd have it 
on top as a working oil lamp. And then in the summer, you'd have this little beauty as an urn for vases. So it's got like a dual purpose. If I had to guess a factory, I mean, with this beautiful sort of Gre Grecian design, very typical Wedgwood, beautiful ormolu mounts, and just a really, really handsome piece. I like it. Let's get some money out, see if I can tempt you. One, two, three, five. There's 100. 200. The independent value, as David said, 80 to 120. Yeah. I thought that was very conservative. Where were you on that? I'm more with the independent valuers. I, I, can, I can see where they're coming from because of that classical design isn't terribly in fashion at the moment. And hopefully one day, you know, everyone will appreciate that again. Absolutely. Well, Karen does, doesn't she? She'll have it straight down to one of those international fairs. She'll have it sold tomorrow. 280 in it. You didn't stop me, I was waiting. Well, let's see, that is a very good offer. And I think I would make it a deal. Annette, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for... Oh, look out, look out. Oh, David, you've got to be quicker <laughs> than that. <laughs> the cash was out like a king cobra striking. How much did it go for? 280. OK, the estimation from our independent valuers was 80 to 120. I have to say, I thought it was worth a lot more than that. I still think 300, 350. I think on the day, Karen <laughs> has got herself a bargain, but I think you have got a fair price. If you went to the sale room, minus the commission, it probably wouldn't be that much different. What a cracking lot. You, you can see how much I love it, can't you? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. I can't wait to get it home. Yeah, well, my children will be happy as well. Yeah. <laughs> Having paid double the valuation, how does Karen feel? Now, have I got a bargain? Well, I'll know that when I sell it. But I think I have paid, I paid a fair price. I still think I'm going to do all right with it. So if I love it, there's other customers out there that I know are going to love it too. So back to the dealer's den. Hi, I'm Ian. I'm Gordon. Gordon. And on Ian's table, there's a tiny piece of deep sea treasure. So what is this we have here? Well, uh, my hobby is scuba diving. Scuba diving? Yes. Okay. Well, it was until sort of the end of last year. And uh, I found that in a jar that I'd brought up. And I was cleaning it out of the silt. And that came out. And that comes out of the jar? It came out of the jar. And what other goodies did you find in these jars? Uh, mainly stuff that smelled a lot and <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that yes <laughs> you know and, uh, rotting debris <laughs> and most of it yes it, uh, algae and the silt and uh, but nothing uh, nothing very exciting no well this is rather interesting really I mean it has got a line indicating that it is silver and it's quite a weighty little gun um, what it would have been used for, I don't know, apart from being just a little display ornament. I imagine it's probably turn of the century, 1890, 1910, somewhere in that region. In value, what do we have here? The weight of silver plus a little bit more is how I would gauge it. Yes. Well, let's say <laughs> 25 pounds. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but I mean... Yeah. There's nothing much I could do with it, you know. So what do you think of my offer of 25? I don't. You don't? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gordon, I've come in here because I, I've heard your comments, and in some ways, I feel the same. I have never seen that model of a rifle, a carbine, whatever it is, and I just think that's a good gambling item, and so I'm going to say, take a shot at it, put it in the auction. <laughs> Would you well, gamble it at auction? Yes, I'll take it. You'll take it to auction? Yes. I think it's a good chance. It could make more. You know, I'm sure it will make more. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's worth that to me. Let's hope it does very well for you in auction. And good luck in auction. Well, thank and thank you. you for bringing it along. Thank, thank you. you very much. Coming up. Five, eight, Find eight, out ten. if big car goes shooting off after the break. Well, that went off with a bang, didn't it? What a nice surprise. Welcome back to D 
Dickinson's real deal. Earlier, we saw Gordon turn down Ian's offer of £25. Would you gamble it at auction? Yes, I'll take it. You'll take it to auction? I think it's a good chance. It could make more. Five, eight, So, eight, let's ten. see if it fares any better in the auction room. Ten pounds to my left now and sell it at ten pounds. You'll come here to the sale room today. It's coming up any second now. The reserve is £35. Is it going to sell? Let's find out. It's coming up now. We come now to lot 170A, which is the uh, Hallmark Silver Novelty Rifle. Interesting lot. Commission interest, various ones. I'm going to have to start the bidding with me at £65. Someone knows with something about this. £65. £65. Pounds. They various like it. Commissions. Any advance? £65, £70, £75. It's with me at £75 now. £80, fresh bid in the room. £85 now, commission. It's against you, sir. It's £85. £90. Thank you. £90 in the room. Commission's out. Room bidder at £90. £90 now. quid now. We're in the room at £90. And make no mistake, we're selling at £90. Well, that went off with a bang, didn't it? What a nice surprise. So £90. We have a commission to take away. About nine quid from that, so we've got eighty-one pounds. Now, Gordon, what's your first reaction to that? Surprise. Surprise? Yeah. I have to tell you, I'm pleased. In some ways I'm not so surprised because small pieces of decorative silver, especially especially novelties, normally do well. On the day, ninety pounds under the gavel, taking home eighty-one pounds. I tell you what, Ian Towney. You missed out, mate. That was the real deal. Earlier, we saw this huge collection of gold come into the dealer's den. It's ended up on Joe's table. Can she strike it, Rich? I'm Joe. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. This doesn't look like the sort of thing that you would wear. No. No. No, it's my wife's uh, gold. She was left it. It's uh, been split up between my wife and a sister and her brother. This is her portion. No, this is. This is getting split three ways. Ah, oh, right, OK. This is the, the whole package. Yeah. Right, OK. We've got a whole mixture here. We've got what looks like 70s um, bracelets. We've got a sovereign. And then we've got this little gold watch, which obviously, when I take that into calculation, I have to allow a little bit off for the, um, for the movement. Because right. obviously that's not going to be gold. And likewise with the stones in the earrings there. And it's all basically nine carat, isn't it? Yeah. Right. It's sad to say, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Scrap value. Scrap value. Yeah. Scrap value. The old scales have been out. Took me a while. Had to wind up the brain cells and get the calculator out and come to some calculations. So you probably know just as much as me how much you want out of this. I have an idea, yeah. Should we just cut to the chase and talk about money? We may as well. OK. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1700, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1800, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1900, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2000. Are we making any You've impression stopped. at all? Yeah, I'll stop. Well, I needed a breather, if nothing all else. Right. Okay, you need to give me some input. Where do you want to be? A little bit higher than that. A little bit higher. Or a bit, bit higher than that. I've worked out what you would have to get at auction to get back and done the calculation. So I kind of, yes, it does need to be higher. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, two. We're nearly there. I'm getting closer. Um, can you give us a little bit more? One, two, three, four, five. Two, three. You've got to now work out the commissions. You've, you've got to do the calculations that I did, but from a different perspective. Um, so I've made an investment, a proposed investment of £2,300. I'll leave it now to you because I know where I am. Right, let me tell you now what our independent valuers say. Because like Joe, they have checked this over meticulously. 
and we have a scrap figure and we are £2,998 which is just a couple of pounds short of £3,000. Now our dealer Joe who is a, a shrewd canny dealer from Newcastle has put down £2,300. That leaves a profit of £700. We've got to try and chip away at that £700 and bring it down to a respectable profit. Yes. If we could get around 2,500, there would be a 500 pound profit without much gamble or without much work. That's what we need. Thank you. I'll go another 100 pounds. One, two, three, four, five. So that's 2,400. Well, I think it needs to be, like David said, towards the two and a half. I'll make it 2,000. 460. Divided three ways, that's £820 each. Mm. Put another £40 on and, and the gold. It doesn't yours. divide though nicely between the three of them. Oh, I've got a calculator, it does it all for me. I'm not going to lose it for 40 quid. So we've got £2,500 and you're going to shake my hand. Deal. Thank you very much. Yes, David, I put the money on did the you, table. Did she? I did, I did. Good on you, girl. <laughs> they may be a bit tough from Newcastle, but they're good girls up there. Good price, good deal. So does that mean all that lovely gold is going to scrap? I could be tempted by one little piece on, on this tray, and that's the dolphin, because... He has a very nice little emerald in his eye, but I'm afraid the rest of it is off to the bullion man and hopefully a nice profit. Well, at the end of a golden day, let's find out how our dealers did with their purchases. Does your husband not buy you diamonds? Uh, no, not yet. I haven't got him well trained. Ian sold the gold rings and bracelet for £340. How much are for you? It would be between five and ten pounds. Karen hasn't sold the buckle yet, but is still really pleased with her purchase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Billy. Martin yeah. has sold the blackout headlamp covers and bike lights separately for seventy-three pounds. Deal. Thank you very much. Really, is a safe bet. Joe sold her last buy to the gold bullion man for two thousand eight hundred and fifty pounds. We've had a great day here in Cumbria. There's been lots of action, lots of haggling, lots of buying and selling. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.